Welcome to another in the continuing series of 4-Minute Fridays by TPM. My name is Bruce Harris and I'm a Senior Applications Engineer here at TPM. Today's topic is going to be creating an electrical symbol legend for Revit MEP. So let's go to Revit. Now over here in Revit, I uh, have a couple walls out here with some of the electrical symbols on them that I want to be a part of my electrical symbol legend. Now there is a category in Revit called legends and you can either right click on legend and go new legend there or you can go to the view tab and go legend here legend. Either way it will produce a new legend. Alright so now I've created a legend called electrical symbols legend. Now the way you normally place components on a legend is you go here to components and go legend component. From here you would pick the, the particular device you wanted to place. So let's place that 2x2 two two light and then I'll go scroll up to the top and place a 24 by 24 8 inch neck diffuser. And you can keep placing symbols like this and then we'll draw the line work around it and put our text in there. Now that works fine for real world objects like that. But it doesn't work very well for the types of components that we want to use. So we want to use our electrical um, fixtures here. So let's do just a plain old duplex receptacle. And you'll notice when I place a duplex receptacle, it's got this weird little box on the end of it. We can't control that. The other thing that we cannot do, it's not rotated and it will not allow us to rotate it. So we can't get rid of that weird little box and we can't rotate it so it's not very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this and show you what we're going to have to do to get around that. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my, my scale basically to 1 to 1 since I'm going to be working with symbols. And therefore the line work I'm going to draw is going to be exactly the size that I want it. So now we're going to draw the line work. I'm going to go up here to my detail line command. Draw a box. five and a half by I'll just do something and we'll worry about the length of it later then I want to draw a line and then I want to draw another line and then actually one last line let's do a vertical line whoops starting at the wrong place. Let's do a vertical line starting here. And then I can copy this one down. So I want to copy it. So I'll take that as a base point and check multiple. And I want one here, I want one here, I want one here. And I'll keep copying them down until I get my little format that I'm looking for. And you get the idea with this. So now I want to place my first electrical symbol. Now if I expand out families and expand out electrical fixtures, I've got all my receptacles here, but if I go to say a duplex receptacle, whether I pick, pick standard or GCI, if I were to drag and drop it, I'm getting that same symbol I got before with that weird box around it. Okay, so that's definitely not what we want. Now what we want is a little more complicated than that, unfortunately. What we want is not the symbol that is the receptacle that has both the 3D components and the symbolic component. What we want is simply the symbolic component. 
Now that will eventually come up under annotation symbols here. Now let's use this simplex as our first one. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to edit family. And I'm going to go to the floor plan reference and zoom in till I find the symbolic representation, which that's what that is. Now that is a separate family. It's called a nested family. So I'm going to go in here and go edit family. And then I simply want to load that one into my project. So now I have loaded it into my project. Now when I load it into my project, it's going to be a part of this. So that was our simplex receptacle annotation right here. And if I were to go back to my legend and drag this, I can now drop what I do want on my legend, which is just the symbol itself. Let's do that one more time so we can see the concept. So I'm going to go back to my floor plan. I'm going to do this duplex next. I'm going to edit family. Go to the floor plan, the reference floor plan. Zoom in until you see the symbolic family. Go edit family. load into project and it's project one that we're loading it into or whatever your name of your project not the receptacle and I don't want to save it and I brought it in here so now we should have over here in our annotation symbols under duplex annotation I should have duplex annotation now so I'll go back to my legend I'll drag duplex annotation and I'll pick it here and then I'll also go down and pick it here. Now here I'm going to go GFCI so my ground fault version of that receptacle. Go back up here to power Okay, next up, I want to do this one because this is going to introduce another little issue that we need to know how to, how to deal with. So we're going to edit this family just like we did the, the previous ones. Go into the reference level. We're going to find our symbol and we're going to edit that family. That's called our receptacle annotation 1. And then we're going to load this into the project, project one. And no to save changes. Now we're going to go back to our legend. And we should have receptacle annotation one. And I'm going to drag it and drop it right here. And then drop another one below it. Now with this other one below it I've got several symbols that are like this that have their text like isolated ground, uh, weather protected, um, countertop. So I can have that symbol for all of those. In fact it is the correct symbol for all those. But here's going to be the problem. When I go to change this, and let's say I'm going to make it a waterproof one, it tells me that you are changing the type parameter, and this could affect many elements. Continue, and I'll say yes, and notice it turned both of those into a weather protected one. So now I just want to go back in and edit this family. And I want to go up here to my family types up here. Choose family types. Click on my label annotation. 
edit it and change it to an instance parameter rather than a type parameter. Now this will not affect the original family because of the way Revit nest families. Okay, so now I want to load this one into my project. And I want to override the one that's there. So now I can come in here and say this one is isolated ground, whereas the other one is weather protected. Okay, now we're going to fast forward a little bit, and I've already got my, my legend put together, and I want to show you one other concept that you can use. Now, what I've done with this is I have all this drawn as individual pieces, okay, and I'm going to say this one's going to be a three-way switch. So I'm going to go in here and edit this. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And now I'm going to make something called a group out of it. So I'm going to grab this and go over here and create a group. So now that is grouped. Now the nice thing about groups are they act as one object. So you can sit here and put them together. Now this is very, very nice if you're going to have a legend that you don't want to have as a static legend that shows all of your symbols. You want to only show the particular symbols that you're using. So that way you could grab your group and take it out or you know move them, rearrange them or whatever that you wanted to do. Well, I did a bad job with that. In fact, I'll grab both of these drag them back up there. So this allows you to take out symbols, rearrange them, anything that you want until you get your symbol legend the way you want. So if you have a single legend that has all of your symbols on it, then you don't need to do that. But if you want to have a symbol legend that only has the symbols that are used in this particular project, then if you make each one of them a group, that makes for a nice way to put them in and take them out at will. Now let's actually put this on a sheet of paper. So I'm going to create a new sheet and I am going to drag this symbol legend on to this sheet. Now I don't want it to have a um, you know a title bar down here so I'm going to say I want to use my no title viewport. And there we go. Now one of the nice things about a, a legend is a legend can be placed on as many sheets as you want. Unlike a schedule that can only be placed on a single sheet. Okay, so I'm going to drag and drop it onto this sheet as well and likewise change it to no title. So you can have legends on as many sheets as you want. I hope you found today's topic useful. It's certainly not something that out of the box is very apparent how you're going to create it. So, so I think you'll find this methodology quite useful. This has been another presentation in the series of 4-Minute Fridays from TPM. My name is Bruce Harris and I want to thank you for joining us and invite you to come back and watch again. Thank you.